Hello, hello, hello. Hello, dear friends. Hello, friends. It is Woke Wednesday. I am super excited to be here. Hi, Matthew. Hi, friends. Hello, everyone. How are you all doing on this pre, well, no, it's Memorial Day weekend, week, I guess. How are you doing? Tell me in an emoji how this week is going for you, maybe what you're looking forward to this weekend, hopefully some rest and recharge and some sun. There will be no sun here in New York. It's going to rain the entire time. Uh, but nonetheless, tell me an emoji. How are you feeling this week, dear friends, before we jump in? Um, oh, I like the O, oh, the beer. Yes, money, hello. Okay, yes, somebody getting rich this weekend. I like this, hello. Um, send things over my way. Hello, Tenshi from Fort Greene. Um, hi to you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this week's Woke Wednesday. Folks, so first of all, um, yes, the lunar eclipse, super excited. You guys know if you follow my stories all the time, I'm super big into astrology. I'm very big into moon energy. Um, it's kind of like a grounding, getting back to the ancestors and this feeling of just like connection to nature. So I'm, I'm super all for that. Um, <laughs> somebody said I just reminded them to play lotto. That is great. Um, go make your bets. But tonight, dear friends, if you did not already, uh, I will tell you before I jump into this Woke Wednesday that it is a major moon tonight. If you follow Moon Omens on IG, which I do, I love their stuff and I post, repost all the time in my stories. Set your intentions. It is a big moon. Um, it was beautiful last night. I'm certain that it will be beautiful again tonight. Uh, set your intentions, right? What do, you, what do you want for this month, right? What are you hoping to let go of? This is a big letting go moon. So I'm super into that. All right, so let's get into the fuckery. Now that I'm telling you all to reset and ground, uh, let's get into the fuckery of this week. So while I was out on my walk today, I don't turn on the news. Obviously I'm out and I'm walking and running and I like to clear my head before I get ready to do Woke Wednesdays. But of course, what did I miss while I was outside trying to get fresh air and you know get some fucking sun? Oh, a mass shooting that took place, right? It's like if you take your eye off the fucking ball for two seconds in this country, you miss a mass shooting. And by miss, I mean you can't not watch the news because at some point something horrific and tragic happens and you're like, wait, what? What I realized when I saw the breaking news coverage as I was getting ready to prepare today for Woke Wednesday, I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck? Like I wasn't even, and I say what the fuck because I wasn't even like, oh my God, this is so awful. Like I wasn't even traumatized in the way that you should be traumatized when you see breaking news and a headline come across that says that there was a mass shooting where eight people were murdered and that there are bombs placed all around the place. And that you know that when you see this, that nothing is going to happen. Like no legislation is gonna happen and we will get to Texas in a moment. But like, I heard an analyst on MSNBC saying, you know, I guess because mass shootings have become so common in the United States and we know now that we are in the midst of re-entry, just how more common the mass shootings are gonna be. The only thing, a uh, high point of COVID-19 was that schools were remote, so we didn't have any school shootings. So no children died uh, by gun violence at schools over the it's since uh, 2020, since COVID. But schools are announcing that they are going back into formal in-person learning come the 2021 and 2022 school year. So what do you think is going to happen when schools go back into regular learning? 
it monthly, we will probably hear about mass school shootings. And then somebody will say, oh my God, we haven't had a school shooting in almost two years. And we would like to congratulate ourselves for that. But the reality is no laws were put on the books. Nothing was done to make our kids safer except to um, commodify their fear. And what do I mean by that? Oh, instead of putting laws on the books that would keep our children and ourselves safe, we sell them bulletproof backpacks. We send kids to school with bulletproof shit that they then have to purchase, right? So we're commodifying their fear and their parents' fear. That's what we do. So anyway, the mass shooting happens, more details are coming out. Um, and what this analyst had said was, I guess it's going to behoove employers to get more security with guns, have more screenings because this person should have been stopped from the outset. Right. And so because we can't rely on our legislature, our policymakers to do anything to help us. Now we're going to rely on our employers to put more guns into a situation to make sure that if one of your coworkers decides to shoot you or shoot up the entire place, that somebody can stop them midway through. That's where we are in America. So we're not relying anymore on our politicians to quote unquote do the right thing because we live in a democracy with only one party. Um, but we are now gonna rely on employers or maybe we'll just do what Texas has done. So let me talk about Texas. I, I forgive me folks, if there are folks on here that are actually from Texas because I don't understand your state, I never have. And maybe that is my Northeastern privilege. I just, I don't understand Texas. I don't understand the gun culture. I don't understand um, the religiosity. I don't understand um, the hate for women, right? Which is, which is combined with their legislative misogyny. I don't, I can't wrap my mind around Texas, but what I've started to believe and what I talk about on Woke AF Daily is that I believe that Texas is actually the Republican Party's Petri dish. It is their testing ground. It is where they go to pass really vicious, unconstitutional laws, whether it be around guns, whether it be around abortion, because they have done both, right? In the past couple of weeks, Governor Greg Abbott you know, didn't do shit to help his folks during COVID, didn't make sure that the lights could stay on as on his watch. Remember, people died, but he wants to talk about pro-life, right? Like pro-life, which is a misnomer and on some bullshit because what he has signed into law last week, I wanted to, I wanna read this and I usually don't read on Woke AF Daily, but I want you to understand what they have done, right? Like what they have fucking done in the state of Texas. So this is according to The Guardian. Senate Bill 8, the six week abortion ban, six week. Now for you people on here that have uteruses, right? Six week abortion ban, there is nothing at six weeks. The cells that are combining at six weeks are the size of a pea. They refer to these the right wing refers to these bills as heartbeat bills, which also infer to me that they know nothing about fucking science, but we know that because they don't actually believe in science or doctors or medical associations or anyone that has degrees. You know, they go with their fucking gut. This is what the bill does. The bill is one of several. There are nine other states, nine other states that have signed these bills into law, these six week bills. And essentially, at six weeks of gestation, according to this article in The Guardian, there is neither a fetus nor a fucking heartbeat. At six weeks of pregnancy, an embryo, which will not develop into a fetus for nearly another month, so that's another four weeks, which would make it nine weeks, is not present. There are no organs. There is no heart. So everything that they offer up, right? And this is why I can't fucking stand Republicans is a lie. And what I realize and what I'm starting to understand is one, 
Republicans use Texas and Georgia as their testing ground for their bullshit to see how far ahead of the Constitution that they can get because they know that the shit that they're doing is unconstitutional, right? They know that. But they also know that the Supreme Court decided to take up a part of a Mississippi ban that they have on abortion to then begin to overturn Roe v. Wade, right? This is always their thing. But as Wu-Tang Clan has said, Cash rules everything around me, right? All of this comes back to fucking money. It is an opportunity each and every time that one of these Republican-led, no science understanding motherfucking states decide to deploy one of these vicious anti-women bills, what they're able to do, folks, is raise millions upon millions of dollars on it right? This has nothing to do with whether or not they give a fuck about life, which we will also get to because we know that that's not true, right? They execute people at will in Texas, right? And then you'll find out a couple of years later, like, oh, that person was innocent. So they're quick to pull the fucking trigger, pun actually intended here, when they are allowing folks who have no training and no license to open carry in their fucking state. That is the other piece of legislation that Greg Abbott signed into law this in over the past two weeks. A piece of legislation that says if you're 21 years old, so just at the age to fucking mix liquor with bullets, you can do that in the state of Texas and you need no license, you need no training, you need nothing, nothing whatsoever. So this is already a state, right? Where you're allowed to walk into the fucking local Starbucks or the Walmart and with a rifle over your shoulder because what the fuck? Is this the wild, wild west? Are you riding in on a horse as well? Why the fuck do you need a rifle in a Starbucks? Why do you need a rifle at the nail salon? I'm just so confused at the rationale, this, this desire to just have this absolutism around the Second Amendment. That there is just, there is no, there, there are no steps here. It's like the Second Amendment is the only amendment in the Constitution that they actually fucking care about or have read. And so here we are where this state has now, I, I want to get to the worst part of this legislation because it's not just the lie and the misnomer that they put out into the ether around a heartbeat, right, at six weeks, which we know, again, doesn't fucking exist. It is a group of cells. It is not a fetus whatsoever. But let us let the truth not get in the way um, of their lying ass stories. The other thing that this bill is going to do, and this is on some wild ass shit, is that it gives anyone, anyone, not even a person that is involved with you intimately, not even the person who got you pregnant, allows anyone to be able to sue, a, launch a civil suit with the minimum amount collected of $10,000 to sue everyone involved with the abortion including folks, the escorts that are needed to bring people from their cars into abortion clinics. Now this Texas bill, this Texas law will allow anybody who doesn't like abortion whatsoever, driving in their car, doesn't even know the person's name that had an abortion, doesn't even know, understand their circumstances to be able to file a lawsuit against the escorts, against the fucking janitor, the receptionist in the building, the lawyers, the doctors, the nurses, everybody. Civilly, unrelated. So that is akin to me, right? That's akin to any of us walking, on, walking down the street, walking, let's say, past a Planned Parenthood, which they probably don't have in the state of Texas, walking past a Planned Parenthood, seeing a person going in and deciding that we are going to sue, we know nothing. We have no context whatsoever for what is happening there. They could be going in for a fucking pap smear for all we know. But this allows anyone who objects to abortion to be able to sue the person getting the abortion, the people providing the abortion, and the people in the building that have nothing to do with the actual medical action taking place, it allows them to sue everybody. 
So for these folks who also say that they are not litigious at all, I want you to understand what the fucking setup is here. They know that these cases are going to go to the Supreme Court. They want these cases to go to the Supreme Court. Why? Because Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump stacked the Supreme Court. They want these cases to go to federal court, right? Why? Because Mitch McConnell has stacked the federal courts. There are no rights that we have ever gotten in this country that have come through legislation alone. Understand that everything that we have gotten in this country from abortion to desegregating of schools to same-sex marriage to everything has come through the courts. It is why Mitch McConnell, the only thing that he's been doing over the past decade plus is either blocking the courts from Democrats or in fact loading them up with unqualified motherfuckers to make sure that each and every right that we have fought for over decades will be rolled back and stripped back entirely. So you see the actions that they are taking right now that Republicans are taking with regard to the big lie, right? You see what they're doing in Arizona. You see the cases that they are putting together in Georgia and in other states. Right. And now we want to, as liberals, as progressives, as people with brains, right, we want to turn around and say, well, they're just lunatics. They're crazy and we don't have to pay attention to them. No, you need to pay attention to what they're doing, because what they are doing is planting the poisonous seeds from which the delegitimization of our future elections will be born from. Right. Because all you have to do is sow a little bit of doubt and then be able to use that as precedent for how you're going to move forward and decide that you are going to sue in every single election, whether it be the fucking school board or the presidential, to be able to get your person in. That's what they are setting up. They are making it so that we are don't believe in our electoral system, right? So that we are operating in places like Iran and places like Egypt in some parts, uh, some countries in Africa where we know that their governments are bullshit. We know that they're running shell governments. We know that the people go out and vote, but we, th their elections are already decided before the people even get out there. That is what Republicans are setting up here. And it is the same thing with what they are doing with regard to gun laws and abortions in Texas. Right now, in June, the Supreme Court, well, we may not know, but they are going to hear a case with regard to New York, right? And the ban, the rights that states have, right? Because only states' rights apparently only matter if you're in a red state. If you're in a blue state, then no, your state's rights, you, your governor has no power, right? That's, that's essentially what Republicans want to set up here, want to be able to dictate. And so here we are, where the Supreme Court is going to hear a case about whether or not denying the ability for people to carry guns and open carry in New York is problematic, right? Can you imagine getting on a subway, walking through Times Square where a couple of weeks ago there was a shooting in the middle of fucking Times Square, which also never happens? And knowing that people in this very densely populated, very diverse place are carrying guns wherever the fuck they wanna go? Folks, like that is what they are setting up. So just look now, like pull yourself back from these state by state issues and now look at the big picture as to what Republicans are setting up across this country. They are flooding our states with guns and gun laws or the absence thereof. They are ensuring that people don't really have access to good quality jobs or education. So let me go back to Texas for a minute and take a beat about what Texas, the largest producer of our school, our public schools textbooks, right? They don't want you to be able to teach the 1619 Project, critical race theory, or anything that they perceive to be negative against white people. So essentially, we are going to move into a place where what? Slavery was an, an unpaid internship, right? Where, where folks who are housed and educated and we have stories about benevolent slave masters, like that's the fucking place that we're going to. Texas, and we can say to ourselves, well, I don't give a fuck about what Texas does. No, pay attention to what the fuck Texas is doing because what Texas is doing is going to have impacts on your life and on your children's lives. 
Because when they decide that they want to rewrite history, when they want to whitewash it, because as the politicians are saying, what these things are doing, what Nicole Hannah Jones and her Pulitzer Prize winning 1619 project is doing is teaching people how to hate themselves. Well, if you think that telling the truth about American history is going to teach people how to hate themselves, that's exactly the fucking reason we need to teach it because you are trying to cover some shit up. Just last week, for over the past couple of weeks, we had the longest surviving member of the Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre testify before Congress at over 100 years old because they have lied for 100 years about the white mobs and the federal government dropping fucking bombs on, white, on Black Wall Street. They've been lying and suppressing that information for a century. So what they did in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where no one, unless you are a black studies person, unless you are very invested in actually unpacking and unlearning the shit that you have been taught over the past decades of your life, no one really knows about the Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre. That's why it's such a fucking big deal that you're having this centurion fucking testify because what was said? If you do not tell the truth and speak up about the pain that people are causing you, they will kill you and tell folks that you fucking enjoyed it. That's what white America has been doing. The fucking gaslight of all gaslights for 400 plus fucking years. So Texas, who is the largest producer, I'm going to say it again, the largest producer of textbooks in this country is creating legislation that would have teachers and school districts lose funding and be fired for teaching the truth about American history, for having any conversations whatsoever about a critical understanding of how racism and race has played a part in American society, the building of our capitalistic structure and our democracy as a whole, and why there are so many gaps in our country with regard to health and welfare, housing, wealth, all of these things and where the fuck it comes from. So when I say on Woke AF Daily on a regular fucking basis as a former educator that our K through 12 system is the biggest proponent of white supremacy and the biggest upholder of white supremacy, this is what the fuck I am talking about. People love to say things like, oh, racism will fade away when the old people die. No, the fuck it won't. Do you know why? Because it's taught every single day, five days a week. That's why it will never go away. It is nothing, has nothing to do with age. Racism has nothing to do with age. If you remember who the fuck was marching, right? Who was at all of these white supremacist rallies that were happening in counter to Black Lives Matter uprisings over the summer of 2020? These were young motherfuckers. Kyle Rittenhouse, who shot and killed two protesters in Wisconsin, was 17 years old. Was 17. So stop telling people and lying to yourselves, frankly, that racism is somehow going to fade away. Because if that were the case, I wouldn't, be have, I wouldn't have a fucking job. Right? I'd be out gardening and doing something productive and healthy rather than alerting people to the fact that this shit is happening over and over and over again because we refuse to go to the heart of where it all begins, which is our fucking education system. They get to dictate who you are taught right? Who is important? Who matters? And if you look at our fucking schooling, and it isn't just about history, folks, it's about math. It is about English. Who is considered the classics that you are forced to study that is on your regents exams or on your SATs? Who gets to decide that? Which brings me to my other point. Do you know the other maneuvers that Republicans are making around the country? What they are rallying around right now? Ah, it isn't just the upcoming midterm elections in 2022. No, no, dear friends. It isn't also trying to get their fucking fascist leader back into the White House, Donald Trump. No, 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 no. Do you know what they're rallying for right now? School boards. School boards. Elections that no one pays attention to. 
that maybe you see signs up on your way to the grocery stores or you know if you have kids maybe you see the signs up that there's going to be a school board vote and you see two names of people maybe you go into a ballot maybe you drop a ballot maybe you don't they are going after the very fabric right of this country which is our public education system imagine think for a minute folks a crop of marjorie taylor greens on your school board imagine a group of ted cruz's kevin mccarthy's mitch mcconnell's on your fucking school boards these are the elections that republicans are paying attention to now that they are raising money around now so that they can dictate what your kids are learning now what we have come to understand over the past year of remote learning, both for parents and teachers, is the fact that many parents have no idea what the fuck their kids are being taught. They're just assuming that they're being taught the same things that they were taught, you know, century, you know, a decade ago or what have you, and that all is well. Folks, pay a fucking attention to what is happening. Because these are the elections that Democrats don't invest in because we're too busy only caring every two years for the balance of power in Congress and every four years as to who is in the White House. And if there is anything that the past couple of years under the Trump regime and is happening right now as Biden is fighting for infrastructure, is fighting for police reform, is fighting for a basic fucking commission on the insurrection, none of those things are getting done. So what we have been taught, because you can learn lessons from bad shit too. What we have been taught is that the executive branch and Congress ain't as powerful as we fucking think. So we may want to start paying attention to down ballot races where the big decisions are being fucking made, where your governors are deciding whether or not you can get health care, right? And opening up an Obamacare marketplace or whether or not your secretary of state is going to certify election results. These are the fucking things that you need to be paying attention to or, or whether your state attorney general is going to bring charges against killer fucking cops, right? Which they didn't do in Kentucky. These fucking elections matter. And this is what Democrats fail to communicate and discuss on a regular fucking basis. Why we were in outrage when Mitch McConnell was blocking Barack Obama's ability over two fucking terms to be able to appoint federal judges to the bench and to be able to, to, be able to appoint a Supreme Court justice, we said nothing. We let that motherfucker do whatever he wanted to do. Oh, we'll get him next time. Folks, if you don't understand right now, that this past election didn't fucking save us. What it did is open up Pandora's box. And what is inside Pandora's box is the next insurrection, Civil War 2.0, and all of the Republican fuckery that they are doing around this country bit by bit by bit. And they are doing so much. They are throwing so fucking much at the wall right now that we are our heads are on a swivel. We don't know what to pay attention to. That's the fucking goal. So pay attention to the fact that there are nine states right now that have these fucking zygote bills that are denying people the ability to dictate whether or not they can have children. And also, do you know the sick point, the sick thing about the Texas bill too, is that there is no exemption for rape, there is no exemption for incest, and they've created the law in such a way that it is a civil offense that anyone can sue, that imagine being a woman who is raped and you are somehow able to get an abortion in this state and then your rapist being able to sue you because you got an abortion of the rapist child that is actually not a law and order episode that is facts because guess what in the state of texas and in general 90 percent of rape cases go unreported let that fucking sink in so what they're doing in Texas around these fucking quote unquote heartbeat bills, these zygote bills, what they are doing is legislating misogyny. What they, that's what the fuck they are doing. So on top of every motherfucker being able to walk into that state and have a gun, right? 
no license, no training. Now your violent domestic abuser can not only wave a gun in your face anywhere, threaten you, that if you decide to take control over your body and abort an unwanted zygote, they have the ability to sue you and bankrupt you at that. That's what the state of Texas has done. And if you think for a moment that these things stay in siloed states and they will not sink in around the country, think again. Texas is the Republican Party's Petri dish. It's where they get to experiment. They see how far they can go and how willingly they are to shred our constitution bit by bit by bit. That's what they're doing. All right, folks, that is it for me today on this wonderful Woke Wednesday. If you want to hear more of me, hour long show, five days a week, then head over to patreon.com slash woke AF and subscribe for $5 a month. You get all of this. Hope you guys have a restful, recharging, wonderful holiday weekend. Um, remember, tonight is a big lunar moon. Set your intention, light a candle, burn some sage. And I wish you all the best. As always, power to the people. And to all the people power, get woke and stay woke as fuck.